Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all are having a wonderful week so far. I hope everybody is doing well. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a situation that happened here in Florida just a couple months ago in this year of 2023. Now, I have a lot of mixed like feelings or theories about what could be going on with this situation. It's interesting because when I first read about this, I really thought it was like cut and dry. Like this is what happened. Oh my goodness. Then I wanted to know the backstory. But the more that I dug into this case, the more questions that I had. So I recommend that you guys stay to the end of this video because at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you guys my opinion what I think happened so far, and give you guys some more things to think about. Before we get into it though, I did wanna let you guys know if you don't already know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. I do things way more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up, and over there we talk about more personal stuff. We go live over there, and I have a $2 tier over there, so all of the true crime stuff that cannot go onto YouTube due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my Patreon. Make sure uh, you read the about section and what each tier offers before you join though. I also have an Instagram, a Snapchat, a Facebook, and I'm now on Like to Know It. So all of the stuff, well, a lot of the stuff that you guys see in my videos, like hair extensions, my tops, my necklaces, my jewelry, stuff like that, makeup, uh, stuff in the background of my houses or my videos. Um, if you guys are curious where I got those, I link as much as I can over on my Like to Know It shop. And so all of those are linked down in the description box if you want to come and find me in those areas. So let's talk about Derek and start at the beginning. Derek Rosa is 13 years old and he actually recently just turned 13 years old and he had been living in a part of Florida that's like down there by Miami with his mother, his stepfather, and his new baby sister. Derek is an eighth grader and he went to a charter middle school and high school combined and he's described as a straight A honor roll student. So this is a 13 year old. He is known to be a really like good boy, if you use those terms, right? Like straight A, on a roll student, very respectful, never raises his voice basically to anybody, kind young man. The neighbors described Derek as, you know, just shy. Like when the neighbors would see him, he didn't really talk. They, they said that he was always helping his mother though. Now Derek's mother's name is Irina Garcia and she's 39 years old. Irina, Derek's mother and Derek's biological father, Jose, separated and Irina got remarried to a man named Frank. Now Derek isn't known to have any issues with his stepfather and it is said that they got along really, really well. Frank, Derek's stepfather, is a truck driver so he would be gone for, you know, periods of time. And so it would be Derek along with his mother and Derek's new little sister. Then that brings us to October 12th of this year. It was a Thursday night and everything just seemed to be completely normal. Irina, Derek's mother, 13 year old Derek and his new little baby, two week old half sister were all at home. Derek's stepfather, Frank was actually working in Georgia. Everything was normal and quiet until Derek called 911 at around 11.30 p.m. When Derek called 911, his little 13-year-old voice started talking to the dispatcher and telling the dispatcher that he had just 
murdered his mother. Because of multiple reasons, you guys can imagine. Derek's age, this being an ongoing case, a lot of this 911 phone call has been redacted. I read that the 911 phone call actually lasted 18 minutes, but bits and pieces of it has been released. Listen to this. English. Hi, I speak English. How can I help you? Can you bring the police over here where I live? What is your address? I don't know my address. Are you by yourself with your mom? Yes, no. My, my baby sister's here too. She's sleeping. I need to know if your mom is, is breathing. She's dead, miss. Okay, and what did you do then? There's blood all over the floor. I need to know. Do okay. you think we can help your mom? Miss, she's dead, miss. Yes. I took pictures and I told my friends about it. Was that bad? You told who about it? My friends. Who did you send us pictures to? My friend. I don't know his real name because he is an online friend who I play with a lot. Where is your sister? She's in her crib sleeping. I how, cannot hear her. How old is your sister? She's only like a week old. Okay, and you did not touch her, correct? No, I did not touch you. I didn't want to touch my sister. Okay, I need you. I need you to go and find me your address, cause I don't know where you are right now. Okay. Okay. I'll it, try to find a mail. Okay, try to find a mail, please. Can you? I'll I'll try. I'll try. Now, I want you guys to remember that 911 phone call because we're gonna talk about what I believe is some really important stuff at the end of this video. But in order to keep going. When the officers arrived to the family's apartment, this is when they saw Derek. They ended up, you know, telling him to put his hands up and they arrested him and they went into the apartment. This is when they found Derek's mother, Irina's body, deceased in the bedroom with multiple stab wounds to her neck. And you guys, she was literally just inches away from the crib where her new two week old baby girl was laying. It is said that when the officers went in that the baby girl was sleeping. So she was sleeping in the crib like nothing had ever happened and she was not harmed in any way. Now investigators believe that Derek waited until his mother fell asleep before he attacked her. When the investigators spoke about this afterwards, they said that he was very apologetic. He was extremely polite when he spoke to them. And it really just kind of threw everybody through a loop. I mean, the officers, they're coming there. He's super nice. He's saying that he's sorry. Baby sister's not touched in any way, but m the mother is laying there on the floor and it obviously been attacked while she was sleeping. None of it made any sense. The cops said that Derek immediately came out and surrendered himself to them. And they said that it's not what you would like think or expect when you're walking into a home and you're seeing this type of crime scene. When Derek was asked why he did this, it is said that he did not provide any information about that or about why he did this to his mother, to the police. Originally, Derek was arrested and taken to the juvenile detention center, but he was later transported to the hospital after he allegedly threatened to end his life. And according to the Miami-Dade State's Attorney's Office, a grand jury was convened and they indicted Derek. So now Derek has been charged with first degree murder as an adult, and then he was transferred to the Metro West Detention Center, which is basically the adult county jail there, and he's being held without bond. Now, this is, this is very interesting to me, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get off track here a bit because he's 13, okay? Now, I know what he did is horrible, horrifying or whatever. And then we talked about Aiden Fucci, who was also 13. But when you listen to these boys, it's two very different 13 year olds. So I wonder how Derek is doing with the adults because you guys heard him on the 911 phone call. I mean, he didn't even know what his address was. On October 24th, after the indictment, Derek wasn't in court, but his family was, and his attorneys were also. The family ended up pleading not guilty on behalf of him, and they begged the judge to release Derek on house arrest. And I'm about to show you guys this video, and it is so sad, but also these family members, his dad, it's 
and his paternal grandmother are so either out of touch with reality or in denial. It's, it's pretty sad to watch. He's a child. No one in the, in the house, in the family, sees him as a grown man. It's very unfortunate that this tragedy occurred, but this child is very humble, very peaceful, and nobody could imagine that this would ever happen. Bonds are not set at first appearance hearings on offenses punishable by life in prison. And I'm not gonna set any kind of bond or conditions of release at this time. I'll touch more on that at the end, but then again on November 28th, another hearing ended up being held, but this time Derek was indeed present. Derek's attorney asked the judge if he could visit the crime scene. The judge approved, however, allegedly the stepfather did not want them to come in and look at the house again because it is alleged that, you know, they've had other family members in there and, and stuff has been cleaned up now but they still ended up going, which I can understand because it's been a couple months, but also I have questions about that. Like, did he clean up the apartment? Are people living in there again? Like, I don't know. There's a piece of that that's not quite making sense, I guess, but I, you know, different people do different things. And then Derek's attorneys asked the judge again if he could be moved back to the juveniles. This is when the judge said that housing Derek anywhere other than the adult jail would not be appropriate in accordance with the law, but he was open to seeing more constitutional law on the matter. And they ended up having another hearing on it and they ended up keeping Derek with the adults as well. Now, when you see Derek's demeanor in court, a lot of people were talking about it, saying that he seemed very calm and heartless. Um, I think there's something else going on with him, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. But he looked maybe even a little disoriented, but then there was other videos where I saw him smiling, talking to his attorneys. It's, it's very bizarre watching this 13 year old and the family was there and they were upset that he was not moved back to the juvenile facility and they were very emotional about it saying things like he's he's being charged as an adult he's not an adult i mean i get it he did an adult crime okay he did but i also understand the family's aspect maybe but then again they were just asking the judge if he could have a second chance and come home like it's a lot going on right now. Now, since all of this stuff has been trickling out, it is said that Derek hasn't had any known mental health issues and there's been like no police officers been called to him. He, like he's never been in trouble. Like the cops haven't come to the apartment before this incident and is seeming like it's coming out of nowhere. And again, the neighbors and everybody else that has known Derek said he's always been very respectful. There's never been a problem. Um, very kind, always helped his mother, helped his mother carry groceries upstairs and all of that stuff. Now get this y'all. Now this is a little bit of a twist of a turn of events. He is scheduled right now to have trial in February of 2024, which is just a couple months away, which may get extended. We'll see. This isn't your typical case. I don't think. Guess who his attorney is y'all? Jose Baez. What? Now, <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to go in on Jose about this one. Y'all know I'll be talking about my opinions because of the Casey Anthony situation. This one I do think might be a little bit different. I'm not completely sure yet. Let's get into some of my opinions now. First of all, that 13-year-old does not sound 13 when he was talking on the phone to the dispatcher. In my opinion, I know there's different levels of 13. He sounded young, man. He sounded very young. I also wanted to bring up the fact that he has had no known mental health issues. And it makes me wonder, because some of the things that he was saying on that 911 phone call makes me feel like there might be something else that was going on with him. Maybe some sort of learning disabilities, maybe some personality, you know, the obstacles. And I would think that the family would know that by now. But then when I saw the paternal family in court asking if he could just have a second chance and come home and that he's a good boy. And even at one point, the father tells the judge that he wanted to be an engineer in the army reserves, you know, or in the military. It was just, 
very, and I don't want to say anything bad about them because you could tell they're pure and they're, their intentions are good and they're just like a rug has been pulled out from underneath them and they love him so much and they're they're begging for mercy for their child and their grandchild. But it definitely seems a bit, I, I don't know if, if the word is like out of touch with like the, the gravity of this situation. I think that's the best way to say it. And so if maybe family members Maybe, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Did, were there things that were missed? Not sure yet. Now, something else that I found interesting, when I listened to the 911 phone call, and I'm actually going to play it for you guys one more time after I say this, and I want you to listen to it because we're going to talk more about it, okay? It sounded like he was talking to somebody in the background. Was somebody else there? Did somebody put him up to this? Like, there's so many questions, but it definitely sounded like he was talking to somebody in the background. Listen to this. You can know if your mom is, is breathing. She's dead, miss. Now, I'm not sure if Derek was talking to somebody else that was there or if he was talking to somebody else on a gaming headset or something because he said that he sent the photos of his deceased mother to his friends and then asked the dispatcher if that was bad, which again, doesn't sound like a 13 year old asking that type of question. But another thing about that, when she asked about his friends, he said that they were his online friends and that he did not know them in real life. You guys, this whole internet thing, this talking to people online, allowing children, I'm not gonna never tell you what to do with your children when it comes to the internet because the internet ain't going nowhere, right? However, it is an experiment. We do not know the effects that the internet, social media, the talking to strangers online on headsets, we do not know the full effect that this is going to have on our youth until way later down the road. This has never been done before. We have never lived like this before. And I want to know who he was talking to. I want to know who he sent those photos to and why. Does he have some sort of you know, delayed maturity, we'll say that, okay? Does, does he have some sort of delayed maturity for some reason? And was he talking to people online? Did did his mom make him mad? And he said, oh, she's making me so mad. And they said, oh, we'll kill her. And then he took it seriously? I mean, there I have so many questions. And on the 911 phone call, he also told the dispatcher that he had a firearm there that belonged to his stepdad and that he was going to end his own life, but that he didn't want to. He didn't want to. The Beretta, I have the gun with me. I was gonna shoot myself, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. And that was interesting. It wasn't like I was going to end my own life, but I got scared or I chickened out, but it was, I didn't want to. So did somebody tell him to? And he has, because you guys, I know that there's some of y'all that are gonna be like, None of it matters, and I get it to a degree. I know that there are some disabilities that, especially in children, that sometimes they can take everything you say as face value, and I just I just have so many questions of what happened with this honor roll student who doesn't get into trouble, who's, who's allegedly always respectful, who makes a 911 phone call and sounds like a five-year-old or a six-year-old doesn't understand if sending the photos to his friend was bad. Did the friend tell him to do it and then he sent him to prove and then he got scared and felt horrible or maybe the friend went, oh crap, you did it. You better call the police. Like what happened? I have so, I just have so many questions, but whatever happened, can he can never take back. He can never go back from that. And no matter what happens, there is a two week old little girl at that time who is going to grow up one day and realize why she doesn't have her mom and then know that she was laying in the bed next to her. Man, that is just so horrible. You guys listen, for those of y'all that are that are grandparents that have stepped up or, or your single fathers that have stepped up or aunts or uncles, thank you. Thank, thank all of y'all for, for doing that for the children in your lives. But I can tell you as somebody that grew up without my mother, um, I thought about it a lot growing up, all the time, wishing that I had a mom. And this little girl is gonna grow up 
yearning and wanting her mother that she never got to know or meet and then find out oh, it's terrible. It's awful. But it doesn't make sense too. There is a big piece of this that is missing. Okay, so the state's attorney released some photos from that night. Now, in the bedroom of Derek's mother's, right where she had like her bed and the crib, there was a baby monitor, probably so she could watch the baby when she was in other rooms of the house. And at around 1023, the monitor shows Derek's mother in the bed. And then the state's attorney also released a still shot of at around 11 o'clock, Derek standing over his mother with the lights off, which makes it look like she probably put the baby to bed. She probably thought she was going to sleep and he came in there with this weapon. And you can almost, it almost looks like his arm is moving. And allegedly it's all on video. Everything is on video. And then the state's attorney released this photo right here. And this is allegedly one of the photos that Derek sent his friends. Remember in the beginning of the video where he said that he sent pictures to his friends? I turned the photo to black and white in order to hide his hand, but the way that his hand is, there is blood on his hand. So he sent this photo to his friends and horrific, absolutely horrific. But I, but I, I wanna know everything that went on. I hope they're investigating this all the way through and I, I'm sure that they probably are, but who are these friends he was talking to online? Why did he send a photo like that? It almost is like I, the job is done, like the job is complete. However, also with that being said, if this is gonna be tried in Florida and if he's gonna be tried as an adult and Jose Baez is his attorney, it might be public. We might find out exactly what happened. If somebody put him up to this, they need to be arrested too. I know that. I mean, they, they're going to have to deal with him regardless, no matter what. I mean, obviously. I mean, is he a cold-hearted killer that just snapped and ended his mama's life because she told him to get off of his gaming system? Or did something else happen? Was somebody else there? Did somebody else do it and he's taken the fall? What happened? Y'all let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I am definitely going to be following this and keeping up with this. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.